Hi, I'm Balan Madhavan. Today, I am going to talk about the reflexes that are required for capturing wildlife. We all have fancy equipment nowadays. Our cameras can now shoot up to 1 by 8,000 of a second. But all these technical things are there. But one of the main virtues that a photographer needs in wildlife photography is about the reflexes he possesses. It's very important because wildlife photography is one branch where you are nothing but a spectator. You can't call the shots. Whatever is happening in front of you, you have to capture the peak of the action. Henry Cartier Brazong has always mentioned this fact that every situation there is, a, there is a peak of the action happening and it is your responsibility of the photographer to capture the peak of the action. So this peak of the action may last a microsecond only. So in today's class, I am talking about such a situation. It's about a very common animal, the striped squirrel, but in a very uncommon situation. We have a squirrel making an ultimate leap from one rock to other. It's a huge jump. So I'll tell the story about this. I was shooting sloth bears in Daroji National Park. Daroji National Park is in Karnataka. It's one of the best places where you are almost sure of seeing a sloth bear. So I was shooting a sloth bear, which was actually below on the rock, feeding on something. But while I was taking pictures of the bear, suddenly I noticed that some movement is happening on top of this boulder. So when I, when I threw the frame, when I turned the tent and tried to see what it is, suddenly I realized that there is a squirrel which is running from point one to point two, again coming back because it is, it is searching for a right position to take an ultimate leap to the other side of the rock. So immediately, I decided this is a beautiful picture if I could capture in the peak of the action. So I have to do a few things. Number one, I need to focus. When the squirrel is jumping, it is impossible to focus at that point. So I have to make a choice. Why should I focus? The second thing is, it's going to be a very fast action. What should be the shutter speed? What aperture I should decide? All these things I have to think and take a decision in that microsecond. Because the squirrel will not wait for the photographer. So I made a few decisions instantly. The first was, it is going to jump from one rock to other, but the, both the rocks are of the same distance. So if I focus on the rock, naturally the squirrel also will be in focus. So focus on the rock, turn the camera with, with the focus locked. I waited, I just increased the ISO because I did not have time to increase the shutter or change the shutter or increase the shutter speed. So simply by increasing the ISO, automatically all the other settings will increase. I needed at least 1 by 2000 shutter speed to freeze the action. So in all this happened in that microsecond without taking my camera away from my eye, I did this and just waited. Within a microsecond, the squirrel took the, took the leap and I was ready. At, and I could capture it at the peak of the action exactly between the two rocks. So that is the beauty of this picture. So it also reminds you that you have to master your equipment 
I always tell this, practice with your camera because in wildlife photography, no animal will ever wait for the photographer. Let it be a tiger or a squirrel. Let it be an elephant or a mountain god. Action is going to happen in front of you and you should not fumble with the equipment and miss the photograph. So keep practicing. You can practice with common subjects that you find ac across you, around you. Try to follow focus. Practice on a common crow or a mina which is abundant around, around the cities. So that way, practice and take full control of your equipment. Because these kind of situations will not wait for you. And when such a situation happens, you should be ready with your camera and capture the peak of the action. Thank you.